eight young explorers are taking on the toughest challenge of their lives. An extreme expedition in South America. That is mad. They're attempting a series of astonishing world firsts. Oh my God! Going where no children have been before. Uh, to get to some of the most awesome places on Earth. We've reached the top. The team are following in the footsteps of the great Elizabethan Sir Walter Raleigh, the first Englishman to explore Guyana as he searched for El Dorado, the lost city of gold. Led by survival expert Ben Major and record-breaking adventurer Polly Murray, the epic journey will push the eight explorers to the limit and beyond. It's all bad. Coming up, a massive mountain to climb. <laughs> it's all bad. Black bags. Oh. Learning to go the green way. I oh, know, I'd rather not I go. I can't go. And a nightmare for Chanel. I just looked like the elephant man at the moment. Previously, the eight explorers set sail from the Caribbean island of Tobago, heading to South America, just like Sir Walter Raleigh 400 years earlier. Before long, most of the first-time sailors were feeling the effects. Only Nikita avoided the dreaded seasickness. It's like the best thing I've ever done. Proving to have an iron stomach and real guts. I'm on the top! After four days sailing round the clock, they finally made it to the coast of Guyana. I am so happy. Can't wait to get my feet onto that dry land. Oh, yeah. I wanted to come here nearly all my life. It's so beautiful. To Guyana. To Guyana. Oh, yes. The remote tropical beach may look like paradise, but it comes complete with a huge number of mosquitoes. Guys, I'm getting munched to the point that this is hellish. Yuck. The team will spend the night here before heading inland, so they use mosquito nets to protect themselves. I hate mosquitoes. do to it? <laughs> Some, like Chanel, have already been bitten badly. Mosquitoes are everywhere. I mean, I am bitten all over. I've got them all on my knuckles. I've even been bitten on my butt. <laughs> Oh my god! I'm getting bit like mosquitoes. <laughs> Chanel has quickly become close friends with Nikita. Little do they know how much the bites will affect the entire trip. Sir Walter Raleigh was the first Englishman to sail to these shores, and he came to seek his fortune. He'd heard legends that Guyana had great riches, including El Dorado, a ruined city made of gold. Raleigh was led by his guides to a remote tribe who claimed to know where to find precious jewels and minerals. It seemed he'd hit the jackpot. The tribesmen promised to bring us to a mountain that had stones the colour of gold. Many believe Raleigh was being taken to Roraima, a unique tabletop mountain rising 10,000 feet out of the rainforest like a gigantic slice of cake. It's one of the most awesome places on the planet and the explorers are going to try to climb it. It is a mad, mad mountain. And you look at it and you go, there's no way that you can actually get to the top of it. This is where everything ramps up and gets a lot, lot harder, a lot, lot quicker. How long does it take to climb? About two days, a long, long two days. We're talking eight to 10 hours walking every day. So it really means, you know, hard work. If they make it, they'll be the youngest group on record to reach the top. I can feel my legs hurting already. <laughs> I thought he was going to say like two hours or something. But so no, I'm a bit surprised. <laughs> you are very evil people. I'm quite looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> Roraima sits at the meeting point of three countries, Guyana, Venezuela and Brazil. And the team have two days of traveling from the coast of Guyana through into Venezuela, the only starting point to tackle the mountain. It's their first glimpse of Guyana's rainforest, one of the most unspoilt jungles in the world. Oh, that's... Oh, my God, the explorers will spend the next month living rough, but they've a last night in civilization to sort out their kit. Gonna need those, that's the take. They'll have to carry everything that goes with them, so packing light is essential. 
Okay. We're not allowed to take any deodorant or anything. Oh, I'm going to stay. Chanel's having problems with her bites, which are making her face and body swell up. I've got them all on my legs, all on my toes and my feet. And it's kind of like made me have an allergy or something. Oh, well, Chanel, her hands are yeah. all swollen Chanel, up. Chanel, so <laughs> Chanel, look, she's done about five right, rounds of Mike Tyson. Her face is out here. She often got so from. Next morning, they load up for the final leg of their journey to Venezuela. But Chanel's taken a serious turn for the worse. Chanel, good morning. Good morning, are we home? Good morning. <laughs> Her face is swollen up badly in the night. Expedition doctor Fee takes a look. Chanel, have you ever had swelling in the face before? No. OK. So tell me how you do feel. It feels messy. Fee thinks Chanel might be having a severe allergic reaction to the insect bites. What we need to do is to put you on some antihistamine tablets just to try and reduce the swelling. I just look like the elephant man at the moment. <laughs> You need to really keep a close eye on her. If things do get worse, it will certainly mean that there's no possibility of her going up the mountain. It's a five-hour journey to Venezuela and the start point for Roraima. At the front of the bus, the other expedition doctor, Henry, joins Fee to discuss Chanel's condition with the leadership team. We need to basically prioritise and manage Chanel's health. We've had a fairly graphic warning that something's not right. Ever since the auditions, they've been aware of how important the expedition is to Chanel. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Good girl, that's fantastic. I want to have excitement in my life and it means, I guess no words can explain how, how much it means to me. The tablets are helping her swelling go down, but the big worry is if she's bitten again while away from civilization and her throat swells up, stopping her breathing. Worst case scenario is a life-threatening emergency with a prolonged evacuation time. We're talking minimum stretch and carry five, six hours before you even get to a helicopter landing site. Just a week into the trip, they've got to take a very tough decision. And soon after they arrive in Venezuela, Ben and Fee call Chanel aside. Both the expedition doctors have been looking at you very closely and we're very concerned about your allergic to reactions that have been happening. Mm. It could possibly be an allergy to insects. If we were to take you into a remote, remote area and you were to get bitten badly, the next thing that could potentially happen could be life-threatening. And that's what we're concerned about, and we can't guarantee your safety. And for that reason, and that reason alone, I'm afraid we can't take you any further. I'm so, so sorry. You know, unfortunately, there's no way in South America that we can take away the insects. Um, so the safest thing to do is to take you out of the environment where the insects are. Um, unfortunately, that's going to mean going back home. I'm so sorry, Chanel. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're a little star, and you really are. And it's one of those awful things, you know what I mean? Because it's the last thing that we wanted to happen, all right? There we go. We're going to miss you every yeah. single day. <laughs> this was my, literally my childhood dream to do all this. <laughs> but you've got, you know, a lot of life ahead of you. And we don't want to put that in danger and for you to miss out on other adventures that you might be able to have in the future. <laughs> Guys, we've got a bit of sad news, OK? She's not going to be able to continue on this oh, expedition. She's going home! <laughs> OK? It is absolutely the last thing any of us ever would have wished for, but we just can't risk it. It's going to be really hard without her because we've all just like bonded and like just like became best of friends and now it's just going to break up the group a whole lot more, I think. It's just better safe than sorry. It's gonna be, we're all going to miss her so much. Chanel's going I'm really upset because she was like one of my best friends on the whole trip. How are you? Can you have a nice time? 
okay guys, last time. <laughs> no. <laughs> Chanel will be looked after by Dr. Henry until she's safely on her way home, while the seven remaining explorers need somehow to focus on the huge challenge ahead. Early tomorrow, they begin their assault on Mount Roraima. I oh, basically hate it. I'm gonna have to climb this big Mount Roraima without her. Akita's been hit so hard, and all I can really try and do is just sort of like encourage her. We've just got a thing. Chanel wouldn't want us to do bad, so we have to move on. The team wake up to the unique spectacle of Mount Roraima, 16 miles away across the rolling hills of Venezuela. It's probably the best view ever woken up to. It's absolutely mind blowing. Just about to. I've woken up with sort of boggly eyes, and then you wake up to this, and it suddenly opens them wide because you know this is stupendous. It's one of the most amazing places on the planet. Whether Raleigh trekked to Roraima itself or one of the nearby tabletop mountains, he never actually managed to get onto the summit. Our guide told me there were diamonds and other precious stones on it, but neither he nor his men dared ascend to the top, the way up it, so impassable. It was hundreds of years later before adventurers found a way to climb Roraima via a treacherous path called the Ramp at a steep angle up the rock face. The explorers have two days to conquer the mountain. Today, they have a trek of 12 miles to reach an overnight stopping point known as military camp. And tomorrow, it's a further trek of three miles to base camp, followed by a gruelling half mile steep climb to the top. I know you're going to hurt today, and there's going to be times when you're on a hill and all you want to do is sit down, I can't go on, I can't go on. It's just go into that little bit of your brain that says, no, I can do this, and just push yourself. I'm looking forward to like climbing it and getting to the top. I'm not looking forward to all the pain. Today we're sat here and then roughly tomorrow night we're going to be up there. Looking 10,000 feet below. Well, I'm speechless to be honest. Excited? Yeah. yeah. This is where it all starts, guys. Mount Roraima is calling us. Up for it? Yeah. 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 Good. Yes. Excellent. Let's enjoy. Though early morning, it's already nearly 30 degrees, and each explorer's rucksack weighs 12 kilos, the same as a small suitcase. They're heading up fairly gentle slopes to start, but even so, most of the team quickly start to flag. It's early days, guys, which does not bode well. Megan, you look pooped. Yes. We're going to be going an hour. Oh, I didn't think it'd be this hot. As soon as you going up on my breathing was really heavy. It just felt horrible. We really need to start getting stuck in and doing this without the whinging. Cough, cough, girls. But as the pace and temperature increase, it's Regan himself who has the most extreme reaction to the trekking. Not nice. His body's having trouble getting used to the heat and exercise. But Dr. Fee and the leaders decide he's OK to continue. I'll just take it nice and steady, all right? Yeah. I just hope that um, I won't be sick again and I can carry on with the group rather than having to stop every so often. 12-year-old Nikita, the youngest girl on the trip, is also finding the trek tough. I miss Schnell. She would encourage me to go on and okay. be more positive. So what would she be saying to you now? You tell me to keep going and that it's all right. Exactly. You've got to do it for her, yeah? Okay. She would be gutted if you were suffering on her account, you know what I mean? Yeah. The route to Roraima means crossing several fast-flowing rivers. We can step on the rocks, no problem. It's just getting a nice equal balance as much as you can. Whoa! The rocks are slippy. The heavy backpacks make it especially tricky. And Josh has trouble keeping his feet. Don't pull me in. Quickly as you can. Quickly as you can. Take your time. Josh, you all right? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. OK, good. 
your pack's so heavy, you just fall back. And that happened to me, so nice and wet. Well, that's one way to get cooled off. They've been on the go for nearly seven hours in the tropical heat, and they still have a demanding uphill trek to reach military camp, their home for the night. And my legs just hurting after that sharp incline. My breathing's really heavy and I'm finding it really... I'm struggling to, like, control it. But it's as nothing compared to the enormity of tomorrow's task. And the closer they get to Roraima's sheer rock face, the more daunting it looks. I find it hard to believe that I'm actually going to get to the top. Like, seriously hard to believe. It's lovely, but it's going to be a terror to climb. At last, in the distance, a very welcome sight, the orange tents of military camp. Oh, I wish the world was flat. Honestly, I do. Those little orange dots are not any closer. Nine hours after they set out, the explorers complete the day's 12-mile hike. Finally! Brilliant. Well done, guys. Oh. I bet you thought it would never end, eh? Coming up here, it felt like a year. Just, oh, I'm so happy I could cry tears of joy. I feel brilliant. Camping around Roraima is strictly controlled, and they must leave the area exactly as they find it. So all rubbish has to be carried out, including their poo. Now, what we've got to help us are black bags. Oh. Oh. Do you need to double bag it? Because these are quite thin. Right? Oh, Nobody that's dirty. So the only thing that goes in here is solid. Uh, I'm not doing it. So pop it on there. We've got, got a nice there. kind of... <laughs> you've got a kind of nice little rest and you can squat over here. Yeah? I'm not going. <laughs> and we're going to collect it on the way down the mountain. Oh, I've right. I can't, I can't go. go. This is totally Michael volunteers to try it out first. Michael here is about to poo in this bag. Oh, I need the toilet. Like he's, badly. he's held it in for how long? A wh just leave it a while. But, right? I'll, I'll get... but he's almost certainly been more recently than Sammy. I've not done a pee since I've been here. In eight days, actually no, nine days, because it was the day before I came. <laughs> <laughs> With Roraima's vertical rock face looming above them, thoughts turn to tomorrow's summit attempt. Obviously, it's going to be a lot harder than today, and today I was crying and moaning. It's 10,000 feet high, and most of it is basically vertical. And I was like, <sighs> on slopes like that. That's going to be very hard then. Summit day, 5.30 a.m. Morning, morning. Rise and shine. It's the big day. We're going to be on top later on. You will be. What was that? I'll be at the bottom. Still. It's going to be twice, if not three times harder oh, today. But that is not a problem because it just is all up there. Yeah. They face a three mile trek to base camp, followed by a half mile steep hike up Roraima itself, including a scramble up the ramp to the top. All right, let's go. It's just after 7 a.m. as they begin the epic record attempt. But yesterday's long trek has taken its toll. I'm aching everywhere. Nikita, think positive, yeah? It's all up here. No, Come it's on. not. Let's I can not feel it on my back. No, let's not think about our backs and our shoulders. I can't help it, they're hurting. I think, yeah, but I think everyone else's are as well. Nikita soon grinds to a complete halt. Oh, I can't go. Right, OK. We'll maybe take some of the weight out of your pack. Do you think that'll help? No, it should do. it's just going up hills, I hate it. Yeah, OK, I've offered to take something out of your pack. Would you like to accept or not? No. OK, it's right, like then no whinging, keep going. But it's not just Nikita who's struggling. Sammy is also falling behind. Come on, Sammy. You're not tired. I am. We can't keep stopping and starting. That is going to tire you guys more than anything. No pain, no gain. I'm really tired and I feel so achy. Guys, it really doesn't help whinging. It doesn't. 
Up ahead, the rest of the team are doing rather right. better. This, I think, looks like a suitable spot for a little breather. Sit down, packs off, let's take ten, OK? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's feeling the effect of the 12 kilo rucksacks. It's like giving someone a piggyback the whole way. And for Sammy, the strain is becoming too much. I don't want to go any further. I'll never making it to the top of that thing. Are you drinking lots of water? It tastes like iodine. That's an obvious no. Right. I don't care if it tastes of iodine. It's liquid and you need to get it down your throat. None of these lot have moaned at all about like the weight of their bag, really. And they're just like making it harder for themselves, moaning, because it just like puts it in your brain that you won't be able to do it. The two girls have already put the expedition well behind schedule, casting doubt on whether they'll be allowed to carry on. Let's just, you know, they're... for the next hour, see how... Well, let's monitor them. But I think there has to be a genuine, genuine yeah, yeah. choice at base yeah. camp because we're, we're talking... Not gonna make it. We're not going to make yeah. it, no. So, Sammy and Nikita urgently need to show they've got what it takes. I want to know if you actually really want to do that. Really? Hand on heart, Hand you want to stand heart. on I really the top. want to do it now, like, really yes, want so to do it. If you really want to get to the top, then let's see it. And you have got half an hour, 40 minutes to prove it to us. I just need to keep positive. With a big decision half a mile ahead at base camp, Sammy is determined to stay with the group. But Nikita just can't seem to keep up. I don't know what it is. I can't do it. See, I think you can do it. I can't. Sammy makes it into base camp with the main team. Sammy stayed with it and has shown that she wants it, which is brilliant. Uh, but Nikita... Work hard, I don't know. She's a long, long way back and it's nearly half an hour before she finally arrives. Base camp. Uh-huh. This is where we have to decide whether you're going to go on or not. If she is allowed to carry on, some, like Josh and Jake, think she'll threaten their chances of success. She was holding us back on, like, 0.5 miles to go. And that just really annoys you because you can't stop and start because it hurts your shoulders and your back and stuff like that. But the leaders feel Nikita's more than capable of grasping this unique opportunity, and they're prepared to give her one last chance. Only you can decide, yeah? <laughs> we've already lost Chanel, and we've lost Chanel through circumstances that none of us wanted to happen. We don't want to lose you as well, when actually what is stopping you at the moment is your head, not any other reason, mm -hmm. OK? Yeah. I'm just going to do it because... I will literally be kicking myself if I don't end up going. From base camp, the trek gets seriously tough. But for Megan, failure is not an option. I'm going to get there, yes, sir. I'm going to get there, yes, sir. Even if it kills me. And the steeper it gets, the more Nikita actually seems to be enjoying it. This is a lot better than uh, walking. Unfortunately, Sammy's close to breaking point. My It's steep. Everyone's probably hurting. Before long, she's holding up the entire expedition. Oh, Sammy. Oh, it hurts all bad. What's our way? If she can't get going quickly, she'll have to head back down. I know your legs are hurting. I know it's difficult to breathe. But we just need to push it on and push it on, OK? I can't. Yeah, you can. Michael takes on the task of helping drive her upwards. Go on, get You're moving. Fine, go. Come on. <laughs> and he also helps encourage Nikita. Right, go. I'm trying. Do not let her start moaning. Oh, Michael, I'm feet are high. As soon as she stops, just tell her to carry on. Look at that. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, gosh. Six hours into the grueling trek, they reach the sheer vertical rock face of Roraima. Look at that. It's a stark reminder they still have a punishing 2,000 feet to the top. <laughs> As they stop for lunch, they see just how far they've come. Oh. Can only see where we started from here. You can just see, like, Forever. Glad you come. I'm really glad I came. All that moaning from certain people. 
<laughs> it's amazing. It's feeling worth it right about now. The pain's feeling worth it. So hopefully once we get up there, we're even better. I'm buzzing. I can't wait to get up there. They make their way round the mountain towards the notorious ramp, the only route up the rock face to the summit. Oh, my God, look how steep that is. We're going up that bit. That's not that's even steep, that's top. vertical. That how are we supposed to get up there? Oh, yeah, wow. You've got about 30 to 40 minutes now of hard effort. Head down and up we go. Let's go. Can the exhausted team rise to this final challenge? Good stuff, well done, Sammy. Keep going, guys. You all right? Yeah, I think so. I think these are getting steeper and steeper. That is the top. Tammy, yeah. Ben, it's grit your teeth time. With their goal now in sight, everyone summons up their last reserves of strength. <laughs> and after eight hours of climbing, all the explorers make it. Pace is finished. Oh. We reached the top. I'm so happy. I know you might not be able to see it. But I am. They're the youngest team on record to conquer Arima, and they've come where Raleigh could only dream of standing. I can't believe we're here. Oh, it's man. amazing. Yeah. We're at the top. <laughs> Just brilliant. I had my doubts, I have to admit, early days, but they pulled it off. They did it. To get up 10,000 feet, it's incredible. I feel really good about myself. Absolutely brilliant. Excellent. I feel quite ashamed of it, all my moaning now. I wouldn't give this up for the world, seriously. We're talking best part of 10,000 feet in two days. They're carrying about a third of their body weight, so is it an achievement? Yeah, it's a big, big thing. Just before I got to base camp, that's when I felt like I couldn't make it up here. And then I started thinking about Chanel. She asked me specifically to do it for her, and I did. And now I'm up here and I feel great. Next time on Serious Explorers. Wow. A top treat for one lucky explorer. Happiest kid on the planet right now. Tackling a treacherous ravine. I can't. Yes, you can. And drama down on the ranch. Oh, my God. This is a bit scary, that's all. Oh.